morning church we welcome every one of you who are joining us this morning worship if you are joining us for the first time we also want to welcome you and if you are just passing by we pray and hope that you will stay with us until the end of our worship well today is our english worship service uh, 33rd anniversary and we are rejoicing and we want to give thanks to our God. Let us prepare ourselves to worship Him even as the pianist plays the prelude. Hear this invitation from Jesus. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Come to me. Get away with me. And you recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you learn to live freely and lightly. Let us be up standing for our opening hymns. 135 Standing on the Promises of God of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally, my love's a strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit. Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing 
I'm standing on the promises of God. Let us continue to be upstanding even as we go to the Lord in prayer. Our Lord, our Heavenly Father, we indeed want to thank you for this beautiful morning you have given to us. We pray, O oh Lord, that it is by your grace, by your mercy, that your people can stand before you to pray to you and to speak to you. Father God, even that your people stand before you, Lord, help us to worship you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. For you are spirit and you are truth. We know, Lord, that you are a merciful God. That you are the God who is full of grace, who has mercy on us, and who shows mercy on your people. Father God, we are living in a time of COVID-19 pandemic. Everything seems uncertain. Our jobs are uncertain. Our economy are uncertain. And the future of this country is also uncertain. Father God, we can only pray to you. We can only depend on you even at this time of trial. Father God, we pray that you will help us to strengthen our faith, to trust you even more in this time, Lord, that you are there for us, that you are there to protect us and to provide for us. Father God, even at this morning as we stand before you, O Lord, we want to pray, Lord, that you will speak to us, that you will use your servant, Reverend Gary Yeo, to speak to us, that your words, Lord, will be just like a true word thoughts, they will pierce our heart. Help us, O Lord, to continue to dwell on your words, not only today, but tomorrow and the day after. Father God, we commit this morning worship into your hands. We want to pray for all the equipment. We want to pray for the internet connection and whatever communication that we are using this morning. We pray, Lord, that we will have an uninterrupted worship this morning so that our Worship this morning will be fruitful, will be edified, and will be acceptable to you. We pray and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning's scripture is taken from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, 1 to 10. If you have the Bible with you, please turn with me to 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and, and envy and all slander. Like newborn infant, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourself, like living stones are being built up as the spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ for it stands in the scripture. Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believe in him will not be put to shame. So, so the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and the stone of stumbling and the rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. Without further ado, we now want to invite uh, Reverend Gary, a pastor for Clan Chinese Methodist Church English Worship Service, to deliver the word of God this morning. 
and the topic that he's going to touch on is four facets of a church. Thank you, Brother Billy, for the reading of the scriptures. Well, a very blessed 33rd anniversary to all English service worshippers of Klein Chinese Methodist Church. How are you this morning? I pray and hope that you and your families are all keeping well during this pandemic time. Well, first and foremost, for those who, of you who may wonder, is this really Pastor Gary with this new haircut? <laughs> yes, let me assure you, this is me. This is authentic Pastor Gary here. here. You know, recently I just uh, had this haircut, uh, I think just last week ago, a week ago, and uh, a few days ago I was uh, doing a video call to uh, one of our senior member in the nursing home and she was looking and squinting her eyes at me at first. Who is that? I said, Pastor Gary here. Pastor Gary, yo? Oh, she said, you got a new hairstyle, Pastor Gary. Well, I told her this is my haircut that will last me for at least two months. Very handy for this pandemic time. Well, um, first of all, as you notice, this recording is being done uh, with a different background. It's not done in the church. And during this EMCO time, uh, this recording is being done from my home. And same with Brother Billy. Uh, he did this recording from home. And I must thank the media and the PA team for all their effort to put all this together and my, I must put on record a word of special thanks to Brother Jonathan who single-handedly during this time, uh, EMCO time, to uh, put all this together. Before we continue with the word of God, let us go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that this morning we are able to come in your presence at your feet to once again listen from you what you want to speak to us through the preaching of your word lord your servant come before you in need of your anointing even this morning may you use me as your mouthpiece to able to speak forth your word in a way that is clear to your people and a way that will minister to your people so lord we commit this morning our time together into your loving hands as we pray and ask all this in jesus precious name amen well, today being the 33rd anniversary of the English worship service, we shall look at four facets of church as depicted in First Peter letter. Well, the church as we know it is like a diamond, isn't it? Paul in the book of Ephesians said that God has planned that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Yeah, the more you look at the church, it's like a diamond with different facets. So this morning, we'll look at the four facets of the church. The last time in 1 Peter chapter 1, we saw the call for hope and holiness. And before chapter 1 ends, there's also a call for Harmony from verse 22 onwards, where we stopped last time. We'll talk about harmony. One of the painful facts of life is that the people of God, that is Christians, do not always get along with each other. You would think that those who walk in hope and holiness would be able to also walk in harmony. But alas, it is not always the case. From God's point of view, there's only one body of Christ on earth. But what we see with our human eyes is a church that is divided or at war even. Today, there's an urgent need for spiritual unity within a local church and among the local churches as well. What more, especially in this difficult time of pandemic. So as we consider the four different facets of the church today, may we also be encouraged to build and maintain unity among ourselves as Christians in the body of Christ, His church. 
Well, the first facet of the church is that we are children in the same family. We experience the same birth. Well, just not the scripture that was read earlier by Brother Billy in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. If you recall, if you may keep your Bible open on that page, the first, the very first word in chapter 2, verse 1 is the word so. So put away all malice and so on. So you see, when you read the word of God, you come across a word like so or therefore, you need to go backward a little bit. Why is the reason that we have to put away all malice and deceit and so on. The reason is when we backtrack to chapter 1 in verse 22, it reads here, Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Why? Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. So how do we purify our souls according to this passage? How? It is by our obedience to the truth, right? But what is truth? Well, only God's word is truth. Jesus said in John's Gospel 17 verse 17, Sanctify them or make them holy in the truth, for your word is truth. Well, here in verse 23 tells us that we are not just sanctified, we are not just made holy by the word of God. We have also been born again by the living and abiding truth of God's word. See, the only way to enter God's spiritual family, the only way to enter God's spiritual family is by a spiritual birth through our faith in Christ. You know, just as there are two parents in our physical first birth, the man and the wife, right? So there are also two parents in spiritual second birth. That is the word of God, and the Spirit of God. Talking about born again, I pray that all of us are truly born again Christians. Have you heard of the phrase, born twice, die once? You see, if we are born again, we will need only to die once, the physical death. But if you're only born once, you need to die twice. That is the physical death and later the eternal death in the lake of fire. You see, our first birth was a birth of flesh, the one that our parents give to us. And we know very well this flesh is perishable. Our human efforts, according to 1 Peter 1 verse 24, says it's like beautiful flowers that may look impressive for a time, but later on they start to wither and die. You see, man's great attempts at unity are destined to fail. If we try to build unity in church based on our first physical birth, we will fail. But if we build unity based on our new second birth, our spiritual birth, it will last. Which one describes you, if I may ask? Are you trying to build unity in the church by your first birth, your physical birth, or by your spiritual second birth? Well, each believer of Christ has been born of the same Holy Spirit that dwells in them, according to Romans 8 verse 9. We call on the same Father and we share His divine nature. And we trust the same word that remains forever and never decay. You see, the externals of the flesh that could divide us would mean nothing when compared with the eternals of the Holy Spirit that unite us. So as children of the same family, we not only have experienced the same birth, but we also 
express the same love. Chapter 1, verse 22. Here, Peter used two different words for love. Philadelphia, which is brotherly love, and agape, which is godly, unconditional love. You see, it is important that we share both kinds of love. We share brotherly love because we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We share agape love because we belong to God and can therefore overlook our differences. You see, by nature, all of us are selfish. So it took a miracle for God to give us this love. Love for one another is indeed proof that we truly have been born again. We must love according to First Peter here that says we must love with a pure heart, motivated by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we may appear to love but with the wrong motives that subtly manipulate others in order to get what we want. But if our love is sincere from a pure heart, we would never use people for our own gain. We are also to love, according to this passage here, earnestly. That is something like an athlete striving with all our energy. You see, love is something that we have to work at. Christian love is not a matter of feeling, but rather a matter of willing. We show love to others when we treat them the same way God treats us. Easier said than done, isn't it? But we have two great helpers. Once again, it is the Word of God and the Spirit of God. If we are filled with the Word of God and the Spirit of God, we will express the love of God in our daily life experiences. The Bible in 1 John 4 verse 20 says that it is impossible to love God and hate our fellow brother at the same time. The Holy Spirit will produce fruits of the Spirit in our lives, Galatians 5 verse 22. And the first of these is none other than love. See, the same truth of God's Word and the Holy Spirit that we trusted and obeyed to become God's children also nurture and empower us. And this, and this brings me to my third sub-point of my main point number one, that is, children of the same, oh, sorry, sorry, children of the same family as children of the same family, we also enjoy the same nourishment that comes from the Word of God. 1 Peter 2 verse 2, that was right just now. Peter says here that we should have cravings for the Word of God, just like hungry babies crave for milk. We should want the pure, unadulterated Word of God. Why? For that alone can help us, can help us grow spiritually. But it is sad when Christians have no interest and appetite for God's word, but must be fed with religious entertainment instead. See, as we grow spiritually, we will discover that God's word is not only milk for babies, but also solid meat for the mature. Let me just read for you 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. Paul said, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while the, yeah. So you see, Paul could not address them as spiritual people, the Corinthians, because they are still of the flesh. Then in another letter he wrote to the Hebrews in chapter 5, in a similar fashion he said this, in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, or rather from verse 11, it said, uh, uh, verse 11, he says, 
you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again. The same basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the work of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. See, if Paul were to write to our church today in Klang Chinese Methodist Church, what would he say? What would he write? Would he say the same thing to us today? That we are still of the flesh. That we cannot take solid food, but still on spiritual milk. You see, as parents, we know instinctively that sometimes our kids have no appetite. It's because why? They have been eating the wrong things. And Peter warns us here to lay aside some negative attitudes that will hinder our appetite and spiritual growth. Here in chapter 2 verse 1, Peter spoke about five negative attitudes and behavior. Malice, it means wickedness in general. Deceit, it means Craftiness, using devious words and actions to get what we want. And often the cause of malice and deceit is envy. And the result of envy is what? It's evil speaking or slander or unkind words. That is conversations that would tear down instead of build up the other person. You see, when we are guilty of this, we are, guilty, we are guilty of malice, deceit, envy, and slander. We will do everything to hide it, isn't it? And that will result in what? In hypocrisies. Indeed, truly, the church today badly need to repent of her hypocrisy as well. And if these bad attitudes and actions are in our lives, we will lose our appetite for the pure word of God. See, the famous author, Christian author, by the name of John Bunyan, who is known for his classic novel, The Pilgrim's Progress, said this, It's either this book will keep you away from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. Either this book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you away from this book. And this book is of course none other than the Word of God, the Bible. How true, isn't it? You see, if we stop feeding and taking in God's Word, what happened to us? We will stop growing and we will stop enjoying or tasting the grace that we can find in the Lord. Sometimes I wonder, could it be that many Christians today are not longing for God's word? It's because they have not tasted, really tasted that the Lord is good. You see, when Christians are growing in the Lord by spending time in His word, they will become peacemakers instead of troublemakers as they promote unity in the church. And next in verses 4 to 8, I won't read through again because it was read just now, we see that Christians are stones in the same building. Whether we agree with each other or not, all true Christians belong to one another as living stones in God's building. And here Jesus also is, so, sorry, here Jesus is described as the living stone. Why? Because he was raised from the dead. So we must always, as this verse say, come to Jesus. As you come to Jesus, the chief cornerstone of the church that binds the building together. In verse 6, Peter is actually quoting from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 16, that Jesus, although he was chosen by God and precious to him, 
yet he was rejected by man. Jesus was not the kind of Messiah, the Christ that the Jews were expecting. So they were offended. They were, they were offended by Jesus and stumbled over him. And verse 8 tells us that the real cause, what is the real cause of their stumbling? It was their refusal to submit to the word of God. Had they believed and obeyed God's word, they would have received the Messiah and been saved. You see, in his first mention of the church in Matthew Gospel 16 verse 18, Jesus said what? I will build my church. Not even the gates of hell will prevail against it. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be reminded of the fact that we are living stones in Christ's building. Yes, at the moment, the church on earth, with all its imperfections, may look like a pile of ruins, but God sees the whole structure as it grows. What a privilege we have to be a part of His church, isn't it? Which is a habitation of God through the Spirit. We will really need to recognize the presence of God's Spirit in His church. According to Ephesians 2 verse 22 and 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16, that God's Spirit is within the church and we ought to recognize that, however imperfect the church on earth may be. People, sorry, Peter wrote this, Peter actually wrote this letter to the churches in five different provinces. Yet, he said that they all belong to the one spiritual house. We all belong to each other because why we belong to Christ. There is a unity of God's people that transcends diverse cultures and languages. But this doesn't mean that we cannot have our denominations differences. This doesn't mean that we cannot have our doctrinal emphasis. Because each churches have to be persuaded by the Spirit where their emphasis and their focus is. But it does mean that we must not let our differences destroy our unity in Christ. You see, too often Christians hinder the building of God's church because why? They have been following the wrong plans. You see, when King Solomon built God's temple, the workers followed the plan so carefully. And likewise, if only all of us would follow God's blueprints that are found in His Word, we would be able to work together to get to build His church for His glory. And thirdly, In verses 5 and 9, Christians, we read here, are priests in the same temple. You see, we are not just a holy priesthood in verse 5. But in verse 9, we read that we are also a royal priesthood. You see, in the Old Testament times, God's people had a priesthood in the tribe of Levi. But today, all of God's people are a priesthood. You are a priest. As well, besides the pastor, each individual believer of Christ has the privilege of coming into God's presence. We do not come to God through any person on earth, but only through the one mediator that is Jesus Christ. And because Jesus is alive in glory, interceding and praying for us, we can minister as holy, as holy priests. This means that our lives should be lived as though we are priests in a temple, which is a high privilege because, as you know, only the tribe of Levi in Israel could serve at the altar or could enter the temple. You see, each priest had different ministries to do, yet they serve under the high priest, the great high priest, Jesus Christ. So as God's priest today, we too must work together in the direction 
and instruction of our great High Priest, Jesus Christ. Each ministry that we serve, that we serve in is a service to God for His glory. You see, every Christian had the privilege of offering spiritual sacrifices to God. While today, we do not bring animal sacrifices anymore like the Old Testament worshippers do. But we can offer our own sacrifices to present to God today. For example, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 to 16, we are urged to offer our bodies to God as living sacrifices, as well as the praise of our lips and the good works that we do for, his, for other people and for His glory. And according to Philippians 4 verse 18, even the money and, the, and other material things that we share with others in God's service are also spiritual sacrifices. And even the people that we win to Christ are sacrifices for His glory, according to Romans 15 verse 16. You see, only as we offer these sacrifices through Jesus Christ are our sacrifices acceptable to God. But if we do any of this for our own pleasure and for our own glory, it will not be acceptable by God. In the Old Testament, book of Exodus chapter 19, verses 15, so, sorry, verses 5 to 6, God said here to the Israelites in Exodus 19, verses 5 to 6, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, and keep my covenant. Obey my voice and keep my covenant. If you only do that, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And these are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. You see, God wanted his people, Israel, to become a kingdom of priests a spiritual influence for godliness. But at last, Israel failed God. Instead of being a positive influence on the godless nations that around them, Israel followed those nations and adopted their pagan practices. God then had to discipline His people many times over for their idolatry, but still they persisted in sin. What about us today? You see, the privilege of priesthood does come with a great responsibility. It is so important that we, as God's holy priests, are set apart from the evil of this world. But of course, it doesn't mean that we should isolate ourselves because the world does need our influence and witness. But we must not allow the world to pollute us or to change us in any way. So separation, set apart, doesn't mean isolation. It is contact without contamination. We cannot run from the world, of course. As Jesus said, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. And finally, verses 9 to 10 also talk about Christians as Citizens of the same nation. Christians as citizens of the same nation. I'm sure you will notice by now the verse that I just read just now from Exodus chapter 19 in the slide before this. There's a great resemblance of the description of the church in this verse in Peter with God's description of Israel in Exodus chapter 19. But does that mean the church today has replaced Israel? By no means. Well, you might have come across, I'm sure, some popular teachings that say that we, the church today, is the new Israel. Well, to me, personally, for me, it is not the right term. It sounds as if the church today has replaced Israel. But I would prefer to say that the church 
today is an extension of Israel, not the new Israel. You can read from Romans chapter 9 to chapter 11 for yourself. Church as a chosen race, a holy nation, doesn't mean that God has given up on Israel and forgotten about them. He has not forgotten his covenant with Abraham and he will indeed fulfill his promises. But it does mean that the church today is to God and the world what Israel was meant to be. It does mean that the church today is to God and the world what Israel was meant to be. Not because it has replaced Israel, but because it has a privilege of being the extension of Israel. The church as a chosen race speaks of the grace of God. God didn't choose Israel because they are a great people, but because he loved them. And so it is with the church today that God has chosen us, not because of anything good that we have done, but purely because of his love and his grace. Jesus said in John 15, You did not choose me, but I chose you. The church as a holy nation speaks about people who are set apart to belong exclusively to God. Our ultimate citizenship is not here, but it's in heaven. So we obey a higher set of laws in heaven if ever the earthly laws are against God's laws. Israel forgot that she was a holy nation. God commanded them to put a difference between what is holy and what is unholy, between what is clean and what is unclean. But they ignored the differences and they had to pay a great price for that. How about us today? Churches today, especially in the West, I believe have also paid a great price in compromising their holiness. For example, in the recent public stand of the Methodist churches in UK, in support of the same-sex marriage, I must thank God for our council of Methodist bishops in Malaysia who have swiftly come up with a letter of response, clearly stating their stand against the same-sex marriage while at the same time doesn't close its doors to the LGBT group of people, but reaching out to them with love and compassion. The church as God's people also speaks of our belonging to God, that we belong to God as God's people. Once we were not God's people because we belong to Satan and the world, but now that we have trusted Christ, we are a part of God's people. We are a special people of his own possession. Why? Because he has purchased us by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And all of these privileges do come with a huge responsibility. And what is that? It is to declare the praises of God to a lost world. Our lives should show forth the glory of God to the world. Because the world is in the dark, people do not know and recognize the excellencies of God. But they should see them in and through our lives. In application, especially pertaining to the church as the priesthood of God, let me just reiterate what our senior pastor, Reverend Tang, has spoke about last Sunday. If you recall, he mentioned about this month as a support and intercession month. He mentioned about how this month, the 10 pastors of the pastoral team have planned to call up every day. Each one called three persons at least three members of the church to show to our members that we do care for them, the church cares for them. And that is exercising our role as priesthood of Christ 
because one of the main role of priests is to pray and intercede for the needs of the people. And if you recall last Sunday, Reverend Ting encouraged us to also set aside time to join the Saturday morning prayer and as well as the monthly combined prayer in the last Friday of the month. And even as the pastors reach out to the members in prayer by calling them and pray with them and pray for them, it is our hope that members in turn will likewise do the same to call one another as well especially more so at this EMCO period. But you ask, Pastor, I'm very drained, I'm very down at this moment. Yes, I understand. We are living in very challenging, very demoralizing time at this, at this time now. Let me encourage you, even in your most down moment, take every effort, cease every effort to read the Word of God. Only the Word of God can strengthen your inner person and you read the word of God not just as a spiritual meal but as a solid food if you have not been able to read through the whole Bible let me encourage you to start reading one chapter a day join any prayer any Bible reading groups that we have announced uh, many times before there are, there are groups around that have this reading through the Bible uh, reading one chapter a day, that I, I believe that is doable. So may you take up the, the challenge to read the Bible, join a, pra a, a prayer group and a Bible, Bible reading group. And even as we pray and read the Word of God, may we put our hands and feet to our prayers as well. If you recall last Sunday, Reverend Tate also mentioned about uh, the two key ministries that reach out to the community of our church that is KCMC CARES, as well as our Social Welfare uh, Committee. So you can see on the slide the phone number of our KCMC CARES person in charge, Brother Hing Hong, as well as if you need counselling or you know of friends that need counselling or any medical advice, our China, Chinese Annual Conference CAC too provide such a kind of service. So let me encourage you to, at this time, not to be disheartened, be encouraged, be strengthened in your inner man by the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. And so, in summary, each of these four facets of the church emphasize to us here the importance and of unity and harmony. Each of these four facets of the church here emphasize the importance of unity and harmony. We belong as children to the one same family of God. We are living stones in the same building of God. We are priests serving in the same temple of God. We are citizens of the same heavenly homeland. Jesus Christ is the source and center of this unity. If only we center our attention and our affection on Him and Him alone, we'll be able to walk and work together. But if we keep focusing on ourselves, we will only cause much division. To be sure, there's always diversity in God's church. But there's also unity in the diversity of God's church. Not all children in the family that we know, I'm sure we all know, isn't it? Not as parents, we know that not all our children in our family are alike. Just as not all stones in a building are the same. It is diversity that gives beauty and richness to a family or to a building. The absence of diversity is not unity, but uniformity. And we all know that how dull it is to have uniformity. Imagining every one of us wear the same shirt, wear the same trousers and so on. How dull it is. Christians, yes, they can defer and still get along. God may call us into different ministries or to use different methods. But we can still love each other and to seek to present a united witness to the world. 
After all, one day all of us will be together in heaven, right? So we will better learn to love each other while we are still on this earth. As the earthly church, as the early church father by the name of St. Augustine once said this, in essentials, unity. In essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. But in all things, charity, that is love. So in closing, in, the, in, in churches, you will see diverse types of people. One more, especially in big church like KCMC. We may have our different upbringings with different temperaments and characters, yet as children of the same family of God, can we accept each other as fellow brothers and sisters for whom Christ also died? As living stones of the same building of God, can we see each other as chosen and precious in God's sight? And as priests of the same temple of God, can we recognize and complement each other's gifts in serving Him? And as citizens of the same nation, can we watch over one another in love so that we remain in the circle of Christian fellowship and that none of us will miss the mark and will miss out on the eternal heavenly homeland that we are all destined for. Yes, we are all wired differently. We all see things differently. We may disagree over many things, but can we all agree to disagree in, in an agreeable way? So may this be our prayer. God, grant me serenity to accept things that I cannot change. Courage to change the things that I can. And wisdom to know the difference. What an apt prayer, isn't it? Especially to pray in this difficult time of pandemic. Yes, there's so much things going on, as what Reverend Ting said last Sunday. There's no use of complaining and, and lamenting, right? But may our attention directed to God in prayer. May we not panic. May we not look at ourselves for solutions. And may we look to God and God alone. In the end, God alone is the one who will give us the solution. Let us pray. Our dear Father in heaven, we want to thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for reminding us the beautiful different facets of the church, that we are children in the same family of God, and that we are living stones in the same building of God, and that we are priests serving in the same temple of God, and that we are citizens of the same nation, the heavenly homeland that we, that we look forward to. So Lord, with this, I pray, we pray that English Worship Service and KCMC Church as a whole will indeed reflect all these four beautiful facets of the church to the world around us. We thank you for the way in which you have watched over KCMC and English Worship Service for the, uh, uh, in particular in the last 33 years. We continue to look to you for grace and for strength in the challenging days ahead. Help, we, help us as a family of God to accept one another as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, recognizing each other as chosen and precious in your sight and, and knowing that each of our fellow brothers and sisters are, are dear to you because Christ also died for them just as much as he died for me. So Lord, help us to serve together as fellow priests using our different gifts in our, in our different ministries that your kingdom will be extended on this earth. Thank you for hearing our prayer. 
In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, today is our English worship service 33, 33rd anniversary. And to bring back sweet memories of yesteryears, we are presenting to you video clips how our English worship service has evolved over the years. Let us sit back and let us enjoy them. Yeah. 
We shall now have our offering and the bank details are displayed on the screen. Please take note of them. And while we prepare ourselves, we shall sing him number 383. Something for D. Him 383, something for D. for your love. Lord, we have offered a small sum of money, Lord, for your work. We pray, Lord, that this money that we have offered will be able to help those who are in need. And we pray, Lord, that this money will also be put to good use for the extension of thy kingdom. We pray, Lord, that you will teach us to be cheerful giver and that you will bless the cheerful giver. All these things we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And for the announcement, we shall run the rest of our time to Reverend Gary. Some announcements from your e bulletin. A few things for me to highlight here. Number one is after this morning worship service at 11 a.m., there will be an online baptism confirmation and membership lesson. If you're interested, please 
contact me at my handphone number stated in the e-bulletin. And secondly, is on a seminar, Building Healthy Marriage Relationship, conducted by Pastors Dr. Tan Sing Guan and his wife, Wun Yi Bin. That is on 17 July, that is next Saturday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And lastly, just to encourage us all to join in our prayer meeting next Saturday, every weekly Saturday morning prayer, sunrise prayer at 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. through online Zoom. And invite us all to be upstanding as we receive the benediction by faith. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes His face to ever shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns His face towards you and grant you His peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, that will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen. Oh. Worship service ends here. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday, same time, 9 a.m. at this same YouTube channel, Media KCMC2, to join us for the English worship service. Until then, stay safe, stay strong in the Lord, take care, and God bless.